commensurate, which would also commensurate the speed. That is why MotoGP, motor riders ride a bicycle and then when they are negotiating a bend or turn, the motor is turned to that angle in order to, the angle will provide extra friction, which will enable them speed, okay, move at that speed. Meaning that if, you, if they don't turn, then they need to reduce speed to, to turn the car. If they don't turn, and they will still want to make that um, move with that speed, then the chances that they can move off the circular path, which we technically call as skate off from the road, is high. So they don't bend for the fun of it, but they bend so that extra centripetal force will be provided so that they will still be able to make their turn without reducing speed. This in four wheel drive cars cannot be done because if you are in a car and you turn yourself in a car, it will have no effect. It will have no effect on the car. You will just be turning your body, but the car will not turn. Okay. Now, if cars would have to go through a certain speed without skidding, how is it done? And in the case of cars, the road is designed and then tilted. So when the road is designed and then tilted, it will automatically tilt or bend the car. Okay, similar to somebody riding a motor or bicycle and then turning so that extra centripetal force will be provided for the, for the rider to still make the turn with a certain maximum amount of speed. Please, are we okay? So we are going to go through how cars, when the road is tilted, okay, what and what happens. And that is by the concept of banking of roads. Banking of roads. And a circular motion. So last time we defined banking of roads as an architectural design. This is an architectural design This is an architectural design when roads are built and tilted at an angle towards the center of the road, center of a circular path road. So this is banking of roads. So when you build a road and then you tilt it at an angle towards the center of a circular path road. This is what we call as banking. And I sent a video of a banked road to the platform. I sent a video of a banked road to the platform. Now, other definition of banking of road is that Building a road
a road and raising the outer outer edge of the road and making an angle and making an angle theta towards the center of the road. So it can be explained as the first point or the second point. Now, why do we bank roads? Or why are roads built okay in that manner? Roads are banked are banked to prevent skidding of vehicles. Now, roads are also built, are banked to increase speed. Roads. So, in the first case, it is for safety purposes. Okay, so for safety, to prevent scaling. Now, roads are also banned to increase traveling speeds on the road. But each allowable speed goes with a certain angle of tilt. And so, Road Safety Commission has um, a maximum speed um, safety signs for, for a certain band angle. Now, what it means is that you cannot go beyond that speed. Even though when the road is banned, the speed to be moved on is greater than when the road is on band. Okay, but there is a limit. Please, are you following? Are you there? Yes, sir. Yes, please. Okay, so even though it increases speed, but there is a limit, a limit which can be embarked on, which cannot be um, which cannot be obtained when the road is on bank. So when it's it, uh, the road is banned, there is a certain maximum allowable speed. Now, there is also that unpopular reason that roads, when roads are banned, it prevents wear and tear. Roads are banned. It's prevents wear and tear of car parts. This is unpopular because they are all, all that they are saying is that when the road is banned, the dependency on friction sometimes is low. And so to some extent, yes, it will prevent wear and tear because we are not dependent on friction. It's to some extent. It isn't true in all cases. We'll go through it and you understand why I'm saying this. So these are the 
three main reasons why road okay a road is bad are you done writing i want to clean the board so we go into it to know what provides the extra centimeter for us are we done Class, are you done copying? So, so this is the Kevin road, and the road is banned. at an angle T towards the center of the circular road O. This is the outer edge of the road, which is raised. And please, you'll find bank roads at areas where the road is curvy, not straight road, no. So the road is tilted at an angle theta towards the center. Well, this is a car plowing on this on the bank road. Now the the weight of the car is always towards the, the direction of gravity. So this is the weight mg of the car. Now when the ties presses on the road, the road will provide a reactional force acting on the car. So this is the normal reaction. The normal reaction is always perpendicular to the, the surface of the room. So R is the normal reaction. Now, if we extend this, we have we have this angle, angle of tilt equal to the angle of tilt theta equal to the angle between the weight and the reaction line. When you extend this line, you have this angle you have this angle equal to what is here by vertically opposite reasons okay so we have the reactional component tilted at an angle theta now what happens is that when we resolve r with the angle we have this the horizontal component of this equal to R cos theta. Then we have the vertical component of it, which is also equal to R sine theta. Okay, so we have resolved the reaction into components. 
r cos theta, and then r sine theta. Please, are we okay with the with the explanation so far? Are you okay? Yes, please. All right. Now, when we look at vertical equilibrium, we have R cos theta component of the reaction balancing the weight, Mg. Then we have R sine theta component, which is unbalanced. It has no balancer at the other end. But because this is directed toward the center of the road, to the center of the road O, we equate this to the centripetal force mv squared over r. OK. Therefore, r sine theta. So in actual fact, what provides the centripetal force is R sine theta. So the R sine theta component of the normal reaction, of the normal reaction provides the needed centripetal force required or provide the needed centripetal force. So when you bank a road, what provides the centripetal force which keeps the car within the circular orbit or the circular path is this. So over here, we are looking at when the surface is frictionless, when there is no friction or frictional force is negligible, this is what provides the centripetal force. Is the R, R sine theta or the sine theta component which provides the centripetal force, which keeps the car in that circular path. Please, are you okay? Are we okay? Yes, please. So in a bank or on a banked road, what provides the centripetal force? It is the it is the R sine theta component of the normal reaction. Please, other books also use N for normal reaction. So in the other case, it will be n sine theta component. So it depends on what is being used to represent the normal reaction. Okay, but for unbound road, it is frictional force. When the road is not bound, it is frictional force. When it is bound, it is the r sine theta. And here we are looking at when the surface is frictionless. A typical application of this is that during winter, elsewhere, not in Ghana, but during winter, ice covers the surface of roads. And in situations like this, the frictional force on the surface of the road is very, very minimal or as if it is not there. And so when the road is banked, what the, the component of the, the R sine theta component of the car keeps the car within the circular path, and it is this. So we are, in this particular analysis, we are looking at when the surface is fresh, almost frictionless. Therefore, when we divide equation two by one, we have R sine theta divided by R cos theta, equal to mv squared over r, also divided by mv. So we have m g r. And so we have 
we have tan theta equal to V squared over Rg. And this will still give us the relation as we saw in when a bicycle bends towards the center. So V squared is equal to Rg tan theta. And V is equal to root of Rg tan of theta. Therefore, the maximum allowable speed must be anything less or equal to square root of Rg tan theta. This is when friction is considered to be less or not when we are ignoring friction. So when we are ignoring friction, this is what happens. Now, there are situations where you cannot eliminate friction. In our part of the world, snow hardly falls. And so the surface of the road is always intact. And when you when the road is banked, when the road is banked, what happens is that the R sine theta component will still be there. And because the surface is still rough, there will be frictional force. So in a situation like this, we'll have both friction and then the R sine theta component providing the centripetal force. What will be the expression for the maximum speed V max in a situation where we are equally dependent on friction? Okay, so this is for when there is no friction. When there is friction and the road is banked, what is the expression for the maximum allowable speed? That is the next thing to look at. Okay. But if you have any question, ask before we continue. If you have any question. If you have any question. Kenneth, Nanama, Janis, Pento. Okay, if you don't have any question, then let's move on. To when there is friction, what happens? When there is friction. This is when there is no friction. And the road is bound. So I'm still going to draw a, a bound road. A bound circular road. So it's a still tilted at an angle theta. This is a car, a very beautiful car. The banking angle is theta. Now, this car is moving in this direction on a road on a road of weight W. So from this point to this point is the weight of the road. This is the vertical height of the road H. So this is it. Okay. Mm -hmm. Imam, please. Okay. Right Imam, right. please. Yes, sir. You can't be late and then disturb me. 
So when the car is, move, is moving in this direction, there is a centrifugal, centrifugal force acting on the car in this direction. So S, F. Then there will be centrifugal force which will act on the car and then ensure that it stays within the circular path. So CP is here. Okay. So of course, here the direction of friction will be the direction of the centrifugal force. Because the, the centrifugal force will want to move the car off the circular part and centrifuga would push it towards the center. So we we'll have this as a direction of frictional force. If there is friction. Now the normal reaction. The normal reaction is here perpendicular to the horizontal. So I'm uh, sorry, the weight, sorry, MG. MG, its weight is here. Because the car glides on the road, there will be the normal reaction perpendicular to the surface of the road. And so R is here. When you resolve, when you resolve this event, you still have R cos theta, and then R sine theta, R sine theta acting here as we saw. Now, the friction is along the surface of the road. The road surface is also tilted or inclined, meaning that the friction is so ideally it's supposed to be perpendicular to the R sine theta. But because the road is tilted, it will also tilt at an angle theta with, with this part. Okay, so this is the angle of tilt between R sine theta and this. So it will also be inclined. Once it is inclined, we can resolve to get component of the friction. Please, it is like this. The friction acts along the surface of the road and it acts at an angle theta because it is not directly perpendicular to this. As we have for, as we have in the case of R sine theta, but it acts at an angle, meaning that friction F can also be resolved into components. So we have this component of it, which is F cos of theta. F is friction. Okay, so we we'll still have F cos theta as a horizontal component. And then also have um, R sine theta, R sine theta acting here, F sine theta, also acting along the vertical as this, F, or oh, oh, sorry, sine theta. This is because the frictional force is not directly perpendicular to R, R cos theta, but it also acts at an angle theta. So we are resolving, we are resolving the frictional force just as we resolve the component of the normal reaction. So we have F cos theta and also F sine theta of the friction acting here. Class, are we okay? So Class, let me come again. This is what we have. Frictional force acts on the surface of the road. So if the road is tilted at an angle theta, because it acts along the surface of the road, it will also be tilted okay, at an angle theta. 
So we have the frictional force also acting like this. But because it is tilted at, a, um, at an angle to a horizontal theta, we are resolving the component of the friction as well. So we have this side as it adjacent, this side is as it vertical. So F cos theta, then F sine theta. But we are bringing this vertical component down here along the direction of the weight. So we have F sine theta and also have the weight of the, of the car on the road. Are we fine? Akosu, are you okay? Give me feedback so as to move on. So, if we look at whatever is happening, let's look at total forces acting vertically. Then we look at total forces acting horizontally on the body. So vertical forces on the body. Vertical forces, we have R sine theta, sorry, R cos theta balanced by F sine theta plus mg. For vertical forces. Now, horizontal forces. Horizontal forces on the body, we have we have R sine theta plus the horizontal component of friction, F cos theta, equal to this are unbalanced. So because of the R direction, we equate it to centripetal force MV squared on R. As, hello. Because it said it's, uh, it balances CF, which is the centrifugal force. So why no, is it unbalanced? No, 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 no. Please. CF is balanced by the actual friction. When CF is here, frictional force is here. But it is not directly perpendicular. It's not directly perpendicular to this horizontal. The reason for which we are resolving into component. So we are looking at horizontal forces, R sine theta. Don't, don't look at the direction of centripetal force, uh, centrifugal force, and then what I'm calling as the horizontal component. This is it. So this is unbalanced. Are you OK? Yes, sir. So if that is it, now, frictional force F is equal to coefficient of friction times normal reaction. R. F is equal to that. So for equation one, for equation one, R cos theta is equal to mu R, mu R, I'm substitute mu, mu r for f here. OK, mu r sine theta plus mg. So that r out cos theta in minus mu sine theta is equal to mg. I'm just grouping r and out. Okay, then equation two. Equation two, R sine theta plus mu R cos theta equals mv squared on R. 
So R out, we have sine theta plus mu cos theta is equal to mv squared on R. Let's call this as maybe equation three. This as equation four. So divide equation um, three by four. Divide equation three by four. So when we divide, we have our canceling out, so cos theta minus mu sine theta over sine theta plus mu cos theta is equal to let's let's rather divide equation four by three. Let's rather divide equation four by three. So equation four divided by equation three. So we are going to divide two by this. So um, sine theta plus mu cos theta all on cos theta minus mu sine theta is equal to mv squared all on mgr. Okay, mv squared on r divided by mg. So we have m canceling out. Okay, then the last state is that divide Divide both numerator of this, of the left hand side, and denominator by cos theta. When you do that, when you divide each bone numerator and denominator by this, it's as if you haven't done anything to the equation. So when you do that, the final outlook will be sine theta over cos theta plus mu cos theta over cos theta divided by, all divided by cos theta over cos theta minus mu sine theta by cos theta. And this is equal to V squared on RG. Please don't be frightened. You will not be asked to prove this. I'm doing, deriving an expression with you, so. Hey, we say we have this long thing. Yes, you will not be asked to prove. So you have sine theta cos theta, and this is and theta plus this is mu divided by this is also one cos theta divided by cos theta. So one minus mu tan theta is equal to v squared over rg. I want you to make v the subject here for me. Make v from this, make v the subject. Make v the subject from the final relation for me.
Are you true? Uh -huh. What did you get for? What did you get Basically. for? Basically. V is equal to square root of. Mm -hmm. tan, tan theta plus mu. So mu plus tan theta. Mm -hmm. All in brackets. Times Rg. So, divided by. We said you know tan theta plus mu all in bracket times rg all divided by one minus mu uh, tan so, theta. Yeah. So one minus mu tan theta. This is rg. And class, when the road is bound and there is friction, this is the formula for maximum speed. When the road is bumped and there is friction, this is the formula for maximum speed. V is equal to Rg, V is equal to square root of Rg tan theta is when there is no consideration for friction. So when there is no friction, this is it. That is why I said that when the road is bound, reduces wear and tear, it works to some extent. And that is when we are not depending on friction. But when the road is bound and we are also looking at frictional force, most especially in our part of the world, then the expression to calculate the maximum speed, this is z. Any question? Can I, any question? No, sir. So, if we have any question, Ishra, Ishra, no. So, else, are you okay? Yes, please. So, I'll send you questions on the two situations. When the road is banged and friction is near, and when the road is banged and there is friction, how to calculate for the maximum speed? All right. Akosha, are you there? Is Akosha here? Yes, please. All right. Are you done writing? So I can clean and continue. So this brings us to the end of circular motion. We've done conical pendulum. We've also done horizontal oscillation, then vertical oscillation, and finally we have we have done uh, there's a banking of roads. I want to begin light, okay, optics, optics. I know IPR and Co. We are doing that on another session. But this session too must also experience some light. Okay, so that at least you all be at par. So I want to begin with you light or geometric optics. Geometric optics. Can I clean the word? 
Can I? Yes, please. So please, at your free time, or whenever you are studying, spend time to go through how this formula is, both formulas, okay, are derived. By, by trying to understand the derivation of the formula, your, I, your understanding of the topics or the concepts will also be entrenched. Rather than learning, or learning the formula itself by rules. Try and then go through how the formula is obtained, okay? That is why I don't just give it to you, but I derive it with you. So you can follow how it is obtained. Immaculate, are you there? Yes, please. Yes, please. For geometric optics, what we usually call as the topic lights. Geometric optics is the study of light and then the properties exhibited by light. So the study. of light and its related properties or characteristics as what Geometric optics is all about. What is light? We can define light as part of the electromagnetic spectrum that enables viewing or that stimulates vision. So light is part of the electromagnetic spectrum that stimulates vision. That's the definition of that. Now what is electromagnetic spectrum? When we talk about electromagnetic spectrum, we are looking at groupings of waves with certain common features. So when waves are grouped with certain common features, that grouping or umbrella of the grouping is what we call as the electromagnetic spectrum. So under this umbrella, we call as electromagnetic spectrum, we have waves, all waves with speed, with speed equal to 3.0 times 10 to the power eight meter per second. All the waves under the electromagnetic spectrum have a speed equal to this, meaning that within Within one second, these waves under the electromagnetic spectrum could travel a distance of 
um, 300 million meters. So within one second, it has gone through a distance of 300 million meters. What a wow. And all the waves have this. Two, all the waves under the electromagnetic spectrum could be propagated with or without any medium. So they also can be propagated with or without material medium. Meaning for these waves, when there is a material for them to be propagated through, they will work. If there is no material, they will still work. So all the waves under the electromagnetic spectrum, EM, shortened as EM spectrum, have these two characters or properties in common. They all have that. And the waves under the electromagnetic spectrum, we can talk about gamma ray, We can talk about X-ray. We can talk about UV, ultraviolet. Let me give you ultraviolet. We can talk about infrared. We can also talk about visible light. We can talk about microwaves. Radio waves. And TV. Signal. These are waves. Under the electromagnetic spectrum with these common features. Travel with the speed of this and then can be propagated with or without any material medium. Please, if you have any question, ask. Okay, so under geometric optics, we are only Study one of them, which is visible lines. And the geometric optics, we are studying this wave, which is part of the electromagnetic spectrum. Hence, geometric optics is the study of lines and its related properties or characteristics. Okay, character, general characteristics. Are we okay, class? <clears throat> Nana, yes. are you fine? Yes, please. Okay, then I'm fine too. Okay, then let me come to you. What are some of the importance of light? Tell me about some importance. Importance of the visible light of light. When we finish, we talk about sources. Yes, the number tell me one importance of visible light. Um, light enables us to see or it promotes vision. So, promotes one, promotes vision. Janice, another importance of light. Janice. It I used to make lasers. Come again. They are used to make lasers. 
they are used to make lasers. The technology of lasers is different. Okay. The technology of lasers is different. But we are look around. Look around and then tell me one of the importance of light. Okay, let me. Nana my again. Lights are used by um plants. Plants absorb light so they can be able For to photosynthesis. Yes. It's true. I mean, so Janice, we are talking about visible lights. Okay. Visible okay. light. So for photosynthesis. Epia Akosia importance of light apart from what we've mentioned. Hey, Kenneth, Kenneth and the rest of you, Nishira. Mm -hmm. Um, this light helps to produce electrical energy. Is right? You are in a, you are in a different spirit. <laughs> the, the technology of electrical energy too is different. Okay, so I think. These are the few that we have on uh, visible lights. Or, Nanama, Nana, you still have more? No, please. Okay. Let's look at sources of lights. Kenneth. Yes, sir. One source of light. Visible light. The sun. The sun. Immaculate. Yes, please. Sir, please. Uh -huh. um, sir, please. Um, fireflies. Fireflies. Insurance. Source, sources of light. Epia. We stayed here. Uh -huh. um, from the sun. From the sun. Somebody just signed that. Janice. It's lightning. Lightning. Electricity. Oh. Okay. Fire. So, you see, sources of light can be grouped into natural sources and artificial sources. The natural sources, you talked about the sun, the moon, fireflies, glowworm, okay? Then the artificial sources, you can talk about. So natural, okay, this then I think I will just... Briefly talk about them so you read. Artificial sources, you can talk about lighted candle. Lighted or burning firewood. Give me more. Lighted candle, burning firewood. 
कहा ओ आर्टिफिशियल नॉट आर्टिफिशियल सोर्सेस Please um touch light. Touch light. Okay, these are not natural things. A situation is created and light is produced. So you can group them sources under natural and artificial. And even the natural sources, you can talk about luminous bodies. and also non luminous bodies luminous bodies and non luminous bodies what are luminous bodies luminous bodies are bodies that produce light on their own example the sun the sun is a source of heat and light the stars so any source that produces light on its own as term as luminous bodies so the sun the stars glow worm firefly are all sources are all sources um that produces light by themselves non luminous bodies A typical example is the moon. The moon reflects light from the sun onto the earth. And so the moon is like the mirror, it's a reflector. And so they say that when you go um take a journey okay or when you visit the surface of the moon the stones there are shiny they say because i haven't been there before another example of non luminous body is also the mirror the mirror also reflects light from sources can you add any for non luminous bodies i've talked about the moon and then the mirrors Nanama Okay so I've given you some examples go and read why so we've talked about natural we've talked about luminous and non luminous bodies then we can also talk about incandescent sources and fluorescent sources of light and fluorescent sources incandescent sources are sources of light <coughs> that produce okay light when heated so when the temperature of the body rises to a very high amount then light is given out a typical example of incandescent source as the sun due to nuclear fusion of atoms and molecules okay this fusion of the atoms okay generates huge amount of energy and then 
It's a reaction. And so the temperature of the reaction is raised. Helium atoms, okay, fuse regularly at a very high temperature. And as a result, um, light energy is also produced. Another source of incandescent, um, another incandescent source is the incandescent bulbs. The, the now banned bulbs, because their energy consumption is high, those that then 100 watt, 60 watt, 40 watt round round bulbs are also um, the, the kind that, ha that produces light when the filament flows, is heated to a certain amount of temperature and then light energy is produced or there is brightness. Then fluorescent sources actually do not produce energy when heated at a very cool low temperature okay light energy can be produced and a typical example is the fluorescent tubes we have in our homes the fluorescent tubes we have in our homes and most of the energy some energy saving bulbs okay so take note and also um, read around some of these things. Please, if you have any question, ask about what all that we've said so far. Yeah, please. Um, so the incandescent sources is charcoal part. Oh, yes. When you set fire into charcoal, it has to, you see, it has, if temperature has to be raised to a certain amount, Okay, but uh, but um, in my belief, you can't say charcoal burning charcoal. Okay. The more the temperature is raised, the more it's luminous, luminous around its brightness. Okay. So burning firewood, charcoal, and all that are all sources that produces light when heated. Please, is that all? Any more question? Can it appear in Nama, Janice, Insura? All right, properties of light. Properties of light. Visible light. Um, exhibit certain properties or character. Respects. These properties or characteristics of light, visible light, one. Other one, light can be reflected. So it can be reflected. Two, it can be refracted. So light can also undergo refraction. Three, light can be diffracted.
Sunlight can go through diffraction. Light can also be interfered. So there can be interference of light and fire. Light, visible light can undergo polarization. And so light can also be polarized. Five key characteristics of light. Nanama. Yes. Sir. Hello, Nanama. Yes, sir. Give me a high message after the class, okay? Yes, please. All right. So, under the study of optics, optics, we have to go through each one of the characteristics one after the other. So, reflection of light. Beginning with reflection of light. What is reflection? What are the factors that affect reflection of light? Yes. Okay, let me call somebody. Vento, can you hear? Can you hear me out? Vento. Yes, please. Vento, I want you to tell me what or tell us what reflection of light is about. Please, reflection of light is when a ray of light um is approaches a polished surface and it bounces back. Okay, so generally, what are, what are you saying? That reflection of light is what? It's when a ray of light approaches mm -hmm. a smooth surface and it bounces back. Okay. Okay. All right. Can somebody else share with me what I mean, he or she thinks about reflection? Hendrix. Hendrix. Share something with me. Yes, Fanto has given us a version. Let us hear from you. Please, it is the change in direction of light when it comes in contact with um, an obstacle. Mm, change in direction. Uh, you are not wrong. You are not wrong, but it also conflicts with refraction. Refraction in a refraction of light, there is also a change in direction when it encounters an obstacle or another media. Okay, so how do we distinguish between what reflection is and what refraction is. Andres, I want you to distinguish between them. Yeah. Andres, Andres, you are Kenneth. Please, mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. reflection of light is like, is when light falls on a smooth surface. Yes. It bounces up in like and different directions. That's just the point. Okay. So the bouncing of light from a surface is what actually distinguishes reflection from refraction. Yes. Okay. Yes. Mm -hmm. But with respect to the change in direction, reflection does it and also refraction also does it. So the bouncing of light from a surface, okay, as a result of 
um, the light encountering a smooth, not necessarily a smooth, even if the surface is not smooth, there will be some extent of reflection. The only thing is that it wouldn't be much. So the bouncing of light off a surface is what we term as reflection. Okay, a rough surface does it, but a smooth surface does it better. So if you want to incident light and have a greater percentage of the incident light to be reflected, then the condition is that you must make the surface so smooth. Please, are you, are you okay? You wanted to say something. Yeah, please, okay. Okay, Immaculate, you wanted to say something. Yeah, please, I'm watching. All right. Conditions. For. Reflection. So what are some of the conditions that must be in place for reflection to okay one the nature of the surface is the surface what material is it is it solid? Is it liquid? Is it gas? If it's solid, is it such an elastic rigid material? So the nature of the surface with which or on which the incident light interacts would also inform the extent of reflection. Two, the smoothness or otherwise of the surface. Yes, as I said earlier on, if the surface is raw, there will be reflection, but the reflection will be scattered. And so it wouldn't be visible. Okay, all, all the reflected light will not concentrate in a certain direction for you to visibly see that there has been a reflection of light. When it scatters, it's like canceling each other. And so its effect will not be so obvious. But when the surface is so smooth, the percentage of reflection very, very high. Akutia. Yes, can you please let the explanation you gave for the nature? Your life was breaking for my sake. I said, with the nature of the material, of the surface, what kind of surface is that? Is it a solid, liquid, gaseous surface? And if it's solid, how is it? Is it a very rigid body? 
or less rigid? Is it a very elastic material or inelastic? Okay, so the nature of the surface informs the magnitude of or the extent of reflection. Then the smoothness of the surface. Reflection takes place on even rough surfaces. But if the surface is rough, the reflection will be irregular. And so you will not see. Meaning if you have incident, a lot of incident light, which we call as beam, incidental on the surface, the reflection will be scattered. So you won't see. But in actual fact, reflection even takes place on rough surfaces. But if the surface is smooth, well polished, the other part is smooth and well polished, okay, then the extent of reflection will be high. The extent of reflection will be high. The reflected rays will be in a certain manner and so you will see that, yes, reflection has actually taken place. So these are the two main conditions for reflection to, to I mean, okay. Any question? Then let's look at types of reflection. And the types of reflection, we have two, two main types. We have what we call as one, regular or specular. Regular or specular reflection. Then we have two, irregular or diffused reflection. So we have regular or specular reflection and then irregular or diffused reflection. Regular reflection occurs on the surface of smooth bodies. So we can find regular reflection on smooth and well-polished surfaces. So whenever we have smooth and then well-polished surfaces, before we look at it, please, a ray of light is represented as a gold line with an arrow at the middle. So if you are drawing anything to represent a ray of light, this is what we must see. If you just draw a line without this arrow, you only understand what you have drawn. We do not understand it. For we physicists, for us to accept that this is a ray, we need this line and then an arrow at the middle. If we have um, two or more rays, which we call as a beam of light or rays, then we expect two or more of these individually with an arrow at the middle. And this is known as parallel beam. Beam of light. 
So the plural version of this is beam. Okay, a beam of light, we are talking about two or more of these. Because they are traveling parallel to each other, hence the adjective parallel. Then <clears throat> we also have what we call convergent beam. Here we have so many rays converging at a common point. So this, this denotes a convergent beam. Then divergent beam. So they are all from all the all the individual single rays of light from one point. And as they travel, they spread out or they diverge. So this is divergent beam or rays. Of light. So, parallel, this is just a ray, parallel beam of light, convergent beam, and divergent beam. Please, as a woman. Hey, are you girls tired? Are you tired? Yes. Okay. Then let's let's draw the curtains on our session now. Let's end it here, okay? We can wear it more. And let's um, move your 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 feedback. Okay, so it's 48. Let's end at 8.55, okay? The truth is that I'm also tired, but let's end at 8.55. Now, so let's come back to our reflected, our regular reflection. So with regular reflection, we have a smooth surface. Example, mirror, a well-polished, okay? For a mirror, we must expect one end of it to be coated. If we have a glass and both ends are not coated, you have a, you have a luger blade, <laughs> okay? If for a mirror, we need to have glassware, with one side of it coated, then we can call it as a mirror. When you coat one end, when light is incident at the other end, it cannot pass through. Every you have about hundred percent of it being, let me say ninety nine, because part of it will be absorbed though. But 98, 99 percent of the incident light will be reflected. When you don't coat one end. It behaves as luba blade, and so you have the light being refracted or pass through. So regular reflection occurs on smooth surfaces, such as um, mirror, well polished floors, well polished floors, calm water surface, not. Um, Surface of water that is agitated, but calm water surface can reflect. So what happens is that here, light is incident 
in an orderly, regularly pattern. So light is incidented orderly or regularly or specularly. And it is also reflected orderly, regularly, or specularly. So incident light or beam, orderly, and its, its reflection is also orderly. <laughs> 